Charles Scott was one of those people who really had a lot of forethought because when he got a 16mm camera in 1933 he began recording things happening around him, in this particular case in Norwich, a city that he lived in, worked in and loved. He made little short films in the 30s which he compiled into sort of like little documentary cine magazines if you like, which he showed clubs and societies and uh, this was the beginning of his filmmaking of a recording Norwich. Perhaps he didn't realise it at the time, uh, but he was about to become a sort of a recorder of Norwich through cine film. When the war came, uh, he had to leave Norwich because he had to go to King's Lynn because uh, he worked for Jacob's Biscuits as a driver delivering biscuits to, to organisations around the county and beyond. And in the wartime, the, uh, the biscuit firms like Peak Freens and Huntley and Palmer's and such like, uh, they all got together and uh, sort of pooled their resources and the main depot was at King's Lynn so Charles Scott went to King's Lynn. While he was there he joined the Home Guard and his filmmaking then uh, got hold of him and he said why can't I make a film about the Home Guard and the Home Guard people said uh, yeah okay we'll find some film for you and uh, you could do it. Now this was quite unusual because film was not easy to get at that time and you couldn't just go around filming anything, you might get into trouble. But he had permission and he set about uh, recreating how the Home Guard was formed and then filming all the activities of the Home Guard. After the war, besides taking film uh, around the county, which uh, he loved, he loved the Norfolk County, um, at Yarmouth Fish Key scenes and things like that, he concentrated on Norwich, which is which he really did like, I think. He, he really was a, a Norwich person and he set about recording as much as he could of what was happening. Now some of these things were made into complete films which he then showed, uh, whereas others were left sort of unedited. Um, for instance, in, the, uh, in 1954 there was a, a bomb site in Norwich uh, at Orford Place, a uh, big hole in the ground, and uh, uh, a new building went up in 1954 for Curls, a department store, it is now Debenhams. He recorded the bomb site uh, and the opening of it where, uh, with adverts outside for frocks for seven and six or whatever it was. So here was a little record of a changing Norwich, of something happening uh, from nothing to a big building going up. Uh, and he continued doing this really for the, for the next 20 or 30 years because he continued filming into the 1970s. So uh, recording changing Norwich was one of his passions that not only included buildings, streets and things like that but also events that were going on. Um, in 1951 the Festival of Britain took place and there were a lot of uh, events in Norwich and he filmed those. Um, again when the coronation came along he was out with his camera filming and he was beginning to use colour film now, Kodachrome colour film, which although it was expensive and every time you press the button cost money, he used it to make a film and uh, this, was, this was what he loved doing. He joined the Cine Club as well and uh, began to work with them and made comedies and, and other documentary films. He was a really busy filmmaker but it was changing Norwich that he loved. 